All right, thanks everybody for coming today. Uh, my name's Deb, I'm the founder of Find Calm Here. We take you from chaos to calm with conversations around different topics uh, to help you best find calm. Everybody finds it a little bit differently. So we're here to help you build habits and structures and practices and routines um, for you to have a go-to response to find some calm. Um, today we're going to talk about finding calm with intuition and we have Vanessa. Uh, she's going to talk to us a little bit about her expertise there and how maybe we can tap into that. So go ahead, Vanessa. Hey everyone, so excited to be here. So like so many of you, um, I realized that I was intuitive at a very young age. I'm South American and my family um, supported spiritual and uh, like you know, exploration, spiritual practices. And even at the age of five, I would say to my mom, I don't like that man in the gray shirt in the brown car or the gray car. She'd be like, what are you talking about? And so we'd get outside, somebody would suddenly, like, and I grew up in New York City, would like stop the car and run to the street screaming and it was the guy in the blue shirt with the gray car. So to that level of intuitiveness, I realized that I had. Around 16, I started reading people like double my age, double, triple, just for free to support people. And then I said to myself, Vanessa, you're a teen, you gotta live your life. And I said, I lost my powers. And by the time I was 22, I started working with an agency in New York City. And I have been a professional intuitive, psychic intuitive and intuition trainer now for two decades. I've been online now about eight years, full time doing this work, working with intuitives all over the world. And one of the things that I realize is that, um, and I think you probably all know as well, is that this is a very natural thing, that it is our birthright, that everybody's intuitive in one way, shape or another, yet because of centuries of maybe religious persecution where we were like disconnected from it, or a pursuing of the intellectual, right? And intellect and intuition do, are not separate. Right? But we've been taught that like that to be an intelligent person means to not go for that woo-woo stuff or to listen. You know, people are like, what is that, that gut feeling? At the same time, I think that in the last 10 years, what I've seen is more of us waking up to the knowing that there's more to life than meets the eye and that we're all being guided to live a more calm life, a more soul uh, purpose life based on our intuitive desire and our intuitive longing. So the work that I do is around intuition. I help people uncover their gifts. I'm a coach. I'm a clinical hypnotist now, 20 years also, and a Reiki energy master healer. I've been running courses online for that lately. And I truly believe that as we uncover our intuitive abilities and release our fears, that we're going to be brought into the alignment of what we truly do want for ourselves, even if we don't know that we want it. And so, yeah, that's me. <laughs> hey, welcome everyone. Thanks, Vanessa. Thanks for sharing that. I appreciate you giving us a little heads up about um, where, your, where your experience lies. Um, did you wanna continue to go through a little bit more about the intuition now? Is that what you wanna do next? Absolutely. So I like to talk in like a little back and forth. So if you feel like it, if you feel, you know, like just chiming in, I'll invite you to it. How many of you have ever felt, and it could be again, a feeling, a knowing, a sensing, an actual voice or a gut reaction or a sensing, it can be any of those. How many of you have ever felt any of that and you followed through on that intuition and it came out and it really worked out for you? right? Have you ever followed on that like intuition, whatever you call it? And have you ever had that feeling or that knowing or that sensing or that gut feeling or the little voice? Because it could be so many different things and you didn't follow it through and you're like, no, maybe you talked yourself out of it. And then you were like, oh, right? Like, why didn't I do it? And I've done that as well. So have you ever had that experience? And so thank you so much. And so, so many of us have already felt it whether it's a knowing, a sensing, a yeah, so Ellen says yes and yes, right. And so one of the ways that I've learned, and I think a lot of us, we learn is by like kind of failing, succeeding. Each and every one of us has our own different way of sensing or intuiting or understanding that energetic information. Yet it's kind of like we have to experience the listening to it and honoring it and then succeeding 
and then kind of like not following it and then going, oh, wow, okay. So when that happens, I need to really pay attention. I wanted to quickly um, kind of share something with all of you here. And I wanted to share this with you. This is from a course that I teach. And what is intuition, right? It's knowing without knowing how we know. Some people see it as a divine connection, a direct revelation. Some people see it as the ability to understand something immediately without the need for conscious reasoning. Some folks see it as taking energetic information and using it in practical ways. And Carolyn Mace is a medical intuitive and New York Times bestselling author. She says it's translogical information which means that it goes beyond time and space. It's like that thing where you feel like, oh, I haven't talked to this person in a long time. And suddenly you get a text from them and they're calling you or writing you or looking you up on a social media platform. And so we are connected beyond time and space. Now, some folks think that instinct is, um, is also intuition. Do any of you think that instinct is intuition? Because I don't. But do any of you think that intuition is instinctive? Carolyn says, I feel like it can be. Totally, totally. Well, one of the ways to recognize whether it is or whether it isn't, right? Because an instinct to me reacts to outer stimuli, right? Like, let's say I learned at a young age, which we all, I hope, learned that if there's a flame in front of you and you reach out to it, you're going to burn your fingers. So instinctually, you pull back, right? Because it's like hot. So we pull back as little children. The thing is, with an instinct, we almost don't have a choice. Something take us, takes us over and we react to it, right? Like there's a loud noise, you see cats jump up and they run, right? Or we might hear something and suddenly we're like, what's up, what's going on? An instinct reacts to some outer stimuli and we're moved immediately. What I say is that intuition involves information and a choice. Many of you said that you've gotten that energy or that knowing and then you didn't follow through. Instinct to me doesn't involve a choice. It's a reactive thing, like we do it as a reaction, while intuition is something where we're like, oh, I'm sensing this, or I pick this up, now I can make a choice. So with intuition, we have a choice to accept or to ignore information. Does anybody else have any um, thought on like what intuition is for you? Or maybe how you've received it or you've experienced it? Like, is it a voice? Is it a gut feeling? Is it a knowing? Um, for me, I think it's like images oftentimes, like in conversation. So in like coaching sessions, a lot of times, like I think of them as, as inklings. And then the choice is interesting you said that because the choice is like, do I share this now? Is this, you know, helpful or, or appropriate? But yeah, oftentimes I just kind of see it as like something playing out in my head. I love it. And that's like, you know, that could be seen as clairvoyance, right? Clear seeing, right? Because there's so many different ways to pick up. Um, sometimes I get a little upset when I see people saying intuition is that little voice or intuition is the gut feeling. Oh my God, it's so much more. It's seeing those images, right? Play out while you're coaching someone. And some other folks said here, lots of intuitive feelings that I don't trust to follow. I'm following it now. I feel like it can be that makes sense, yes. The inner voice, for some people it's an inner knowing. The inner voice can be clear audience. You hear that little voice within yourself, clear hearing, right? And a knowing, clear sentience. Now, all of the different clairs have, have pros and cons to it. Like a lot of people say to me, I don't know if you find this, Nick, they're like, I see stuff, but I don't understand it. I have to then figure it out, right? And then the person that knows stuff or hears stuff, they may not see stuff, but they're like, and I find a lot of times when I teach classes, you know, my week intuition boot camp, that people are like, I'm so jealous of the person who can see. Or other people are like, I'm so jealous of the person who can hear. At the same time, I really feel that our gift comes through us in the way that it does because it's just uniquely us. So I wanted to share one more. And I'm, we're also going to go in in a moment and I want us to connect to our intuition. I'm going to guide us to connect to that and to ground um, into our intuition. And so I want to share something here that I have on the screen. Let's see, here we go. And so ways in which we can experience intuition, right? Gut feelings, it could be an emotional shift. And that's usually like an emotional intuitive, right? 
Like uh, when I was 16, I walked into a room. I was super happy. I was in Florida hanging out with my family and I walked in all happy and suddenly I felt this pressure and I got really sad. I started crying and I ran off to the bathroom like, oh my God, I was happy and then I was sad and I was crying. And I was thinking, why, why did this happen? And I didn't know what was going on. My mom followed me and she goes, my friend was in the room and she had her back to you. She just told me that her husband has been cheating on her for three years and he just ran away with her best friend, right? So that the empath is an intuitive that can walk into a room or a situation, pick up an emotional energy, have an emotional shift and not know exactly why, right? Do any of you relate to that? Do you feel like you're an, an emotional intuitive, like an empath, like you go into a space and you pick up feelings, right? I, I know that I am one, right? And it can be tough because then it's like, is it me that's anxious or sad? Is it someone else, right? Yeah, so I wanted to talk about it because it's so important because if we're going to find calm with intuition, we have to also learn what kind of intuitive we are and then take care of ourselves, right? So a way to help ourselves if we're an emotional intuitive is to actually move away from people. So if you have, if you're, you know, if it's pandemic time and you're home with kids and a husband working from home or a partner or, or a wife, um, you may need to go take a walk by yourself. You may need to take that bath, that shower and just lock that door because you almost need to get away from everybody's emotional pulling and kind of wanting from you. So you could be like, all right, this is me. This is what I feel. Now, for some folks, it's mental awareness or comprehension. It's just like this knowing. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, this is what's going on. For other people, like Nick had shared, it was visions and images, right? He calls it inklings. I love that, your inklings. For some people, or for many of us, we can experience intuition through exterior signs, songs, and a radio. I had a client who came to me. She goes, I want to move my business to California. I'm super scared. And I'm like, just listen in on what you're receiving. But she was too scared to even connect. So the next week, she told me she went to the dentist. Hotel California was on. She went, she was in the car in New York. Suddenly she saw every other license plate was California. She got California girls, California dreaming. She's like, all right. She wound up moving there because she got those signs on the radio and exterior signs. And then wound up not only succeeding in her business, but also met her future partner. And so we are guided also by signs outside of ourselves. There's also a way to experience intuition through synchronistic events and meetings, right? And for many of us too, a connection to nature. I would like to add to this list, it's not there, but there's also a type of intuitive intuition. And a lot of physical therapists have this, massage therapists, which is the sensing, knowing when to hug someone, knowing when they need a hand, like without words. And that is like this physical ability to sense when somebody needs a hug or a touch. And that's also part of how we experience intuition. So Nick says, I like having young children. I feel like having young children must bring out the empath in me. The energy gets intense sometimes. Yeah. So Nick, take a walk in nature, uh, go for a walk and just really kind of, you know, because they're as a parent too, right? As a parent, you're stretching out these little energy cords of, okay, my children, how are they? How's my business? And then they're like tugging you and then you're picking up and you're like the psychic sponge. And then you're like, I don't even know what's me anymore because you just like kind of like sucked it up. And so uh, any questions so far before we go into the meditation, does a lot of this resonate with you? Yeah. Great, great. And what I want to do before we close today is I want to go through each of the different types and support you and what you could do for yourself to feel better, you know, or take care of yourself, self-care, right? Intuitive self-care, because all of the types have different things, right? So we'll talk about that before. And some of us are combination, by the way. It's not cut and dry. It's not like you can only see, you can only hear, you can only feel. A lot of us pick up in different ways, but sometimes we may have one particular talent that really kind of, or gift that we have that might outshine others. And so Ellen says, absolutely, wonderful. So I wanna guide us in and what I ask of you, and then we're gonna break out into little groups so we could talk about it separately and then come back. But what I ask for you as we go into this little meditation is that you allow yourself to receive 
you've had a day, you've had a week, whatever you went through already. It's what, Wednesday. So just allow yourself to receive this peace, this time. All of you do so much for everyone and your families and your lives. And just allow yourself to receive. There's nothing for you to figure out or do or get it right. It just is. And just allow that to flow through you. And so just allowing your eyes to gently close now for a moment. And as we allow our eyes to close, taking a deep breath in and exhaling and just releasing the day, letting go. And just noticing our breath going in and out. And as we do, feeling our feet on the ground or on the couch or wherever they may be, pushing our booties into the seat wherever we are and feeling our booty there so we know that we're here. Some spiritual traditions ask you to leave your body. I believe intuition asks you to be present here and now. As you allow yourself to just listen to your breath going in and out and knowing that it's your time, it's your time to receive. Just following your breath going in and out. And now imagining a beautiful golden sphere of light. And this golden sphere of light represents your deepest knowing that knowing that knows without how it knows. The knowing that brings you inklings and little voices and just the knowing of what's next. And this beautiful golden sphere of light represents all of that deep, amazing wisdom. And this beautiful golden sphere of light begins to pour healing energy into the top of your head, into your crown. And as you allow yourself to receive this energy, Asking in your heart that your own higher self, your own angels, your own guides, your own deepest wisdom be present for you today. With every breath in, allowing yourself to be present. And with every exhalation, allowing yourself to release and let go. And you're letting go. As this golden light fills the top of your head, knowing you're already in a process of releasing any of the stuff from the day, the month, and gently allowing the healing light to go into your third eye as it fills that space with golden healing light. Breathing in the energy that it is now safe to see, it is now safe to know, it is now safe to hear. As we allow this energy to fill and just continue to breathe, and we're already in a process of deepening our inner knowing. As the golden light goes from the third eye into our throat, allowing the energy to clear up any debris around speaking our truth. And just breathing in, exhaling. As the golden light travels into your heart space, just breathing in, allowing your heart to expand. It's your time to receive. And that intuition is our birthright. And we're actually flowing in it every day. As the light travels from our heart into our solar plexus, the top of the stomach, allowing the golden light to fill us there. With every breath in, allowing ourselves to be present. And every exhalation, allowing ourselves to release and let go. As this golden light fills that beautiful space in our solar plexus and our belly, knowing that it's now safe to talk about this, knowing that it's now safe because it is true. Every one of us is connected to the energy in the world. We are made of energy and that we're always picking up this energetic information everywhere we are, everywhere we be, everywhere we move through. As the golden light travels now out of the space between our hips, breathing in the healing and the clearing, knowing that it is safe for us to connect to this, and gently bringing the light now to the base of the spine, allowing the light to heal and expand. Many of us are raised or products of different beliefs around this. So just breathing in extra healing energy, giving ourselves the space to explore, to be. 
the golden light travels from the base of the spine to the hips, the legs, the knees, and the feet, flowing into the floor beneath you into the earth, grounding us. And imagining this beautiful golden light expanding around your body in a beautiful egg-shaped shell, your aura. As this beautiful golden light expands around you, allowing yourself to follow your breath allowing yourself to be restored with this beautiful healing intuitive energy. And as this energy flows through you, allowing yourself to receive, asking your deepest knowing, what do I need to know right now? What do I need to know right now? And allowing yourself to breathe in, exhale. And just going another level deeper with another breath and letting go even more. And if there's been a situation or something that maybe you've been mulling over, stressing about, thinking about, or even just plain excited about, Let's allow ourselves to feel that energy or think that energy or see that. Something that we're excited about or wondering about or a situation in our life. It could be a trip, a project, something that we're thinking about working on. As we allow ourselves to breathe in the energy of that, that you've been thinking about or feeling into or excited or worried about. Taking another deep breath in and asking, is there anything that I need to know about the situation or project or trip. And allowing yourself to receive, whether it's feeling or words or visions, thoughts sensation. And if you need any clarity in what you're receiving, just asking, hey, inner self, give me some clarity. And then just giving thanks. And as we begin to close this meditation, taking another deep breath in and asking your higher self, your deepest wisdom, your inner knowing, how can I connect with you more clearly? How can I connect with you more clearly? And just gently giving thanks, knowing that your intuitive knowing, hearing, seeing, sensing, feeling, and being is always with you. And knowing that within minutes, hours, and days, it'll become clearer, deeper, and manageable as you wish. And so it is. And giving thanks. And gently returning whenever you're ready. Lynn, you look great. I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so welcome, Ellen. And so as we gently come back, I don't know if you want to write anything down. Sometimes people sense something, feel something. And I just wanted to add something too. I once did this, something like this in a group. And the minute that this person closed her eyes, she was blissed out. 
And when we came back and everybody was sharing stuff, they were like, I saw this, I felt that, I heard that. She felt left out and she's like, I didn't get anything. I just, you know, I was in it. And I said, listen, when I guided you in, you closed your eyes and you were blissed out, girl. She goes, oh yeah, I felt totally at peace. And I was like, do you know how many years people meditate to get to that place? So I was like, you're a spiritual intuitive. And so some folks feel like they're not intuitive, but they're the kind that literally close their eyes and they're like, zoom, bliss, right? And so it's so important um, to know that we're all intuitive in different ways. And I see, Carol said, what a beautiful guided meditation. Oh, thank you, Carol. Priscilla, yes, very peaceful indeed. I'm so glad. Coming back to ourselves, right? Connecting to ourselves. So I would love to have a little breakout session. And if you feel called to share something that came up for you, that would be great. Um, and it would also be great to, so notice, so let's say this one, notice how did it come to you? Did you hear it? Did you feel it? Did you sense it? Did you know it? Or were you just blissed out? You know, which way did it come through? So that's one thing. And then two, if you feel like something that came through for you resonated, that kind of thing. So it's simple. One, how did you pick up the info or receive it? And two, if you feel like this resonates with you and can serve you. So yeah. So absolutely, whenever we're ready. Were you able to like, when you were chatting with people, did, you, did people notice that they had a particular way of receiving information or uh, were you just, were you blissed out, like in general? We, I mean, we had some technical difficulties connecting, so um, none of the people that I saw coming and going in breakouts were able to really connect on this, um, but I'm happy to share my experience. Oh, I'd love to hear it, yeah. So, first of all, like, I've done some meditations like that, where I'm connecting in, you know, in order to chakras and stuff, and this one immediately was, like, super powerful. Like, all the centers were, like, throbbing and um and in asking the questions what came to me were these um kind of ideas i guess it was like a blend between some vision and some words and i think i maybe saw some of the words but um it was just a message of like keep healing keep focusing on self and family um and keep meditating um, we're getting a dog in a few weeks and that that like came through really strong like that's a good idea you know <laughs> so uh, good so yeah it was, it was neat really neat that's so great nick that's so great and you know when nick was sharing earlier that he gets inklings and he usually gets visions when he works with coaching clients and now he said he got words you know when we allow ourselves to go even deeper without like expectation of having an ability right our intuition starts to expand in different ways so if we never saw, we might see. If we never heard, we might hear. If we never knew, we might know. So, so great. Um, does anybody else want to share? Oh, yeah, Lynn. Okay. Um, first of all, Vanessa, so great to see you. Um, that was absolutely amazing. And I am in shock at how... Um, successful that was I guess is the right word because um first of all I went I, I went in and I thought it was absolutely beautiful your yellow light thing and that just flowed beautifully and I envisioned it and it was gorgeous and it was healing and it was calming and then when you started talking about talking to your higher self and asking your higher self um, questions and then you have to try to think to feel where it was coming from that's not something I ever even thought of before I just always knew what I knew period the end I guess I never thought to even look any deeper than that so thank you for that gift <laughs> and um, and yeah so I totally felt it like from the heart area that's I guess where I feel that because that seemed it, it just nothing felt out of the ordinary but you brought that to my attention, so thank you. Thank you, Lynn, thank you. And you know, that's something that's very true. Um, 
most of us sometimes don't think we're that intuitive or we're just like, yeah, I am. I know it already because it's what we do every day of our lives. I always say like the eagle flies really high and I don't think the eagle's like, I'm so cool. Look at my wingspan. You know, the eagle's not like that because we're just used to intuiting. We're used to hearing, feeling, sensing, or like you were saying, Lynn, you just know what you know. Right. Yeah. And so intuition yeah. is really natural. It is flowing through us. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, Lynn. I'm so glad. Thank you, Vanessa. <laughs> uh, and so I'm absolutely mm -hmm. open to any questions around intuition or anybody who wants to share anything. And before we end, actually, I am going to go through the different, like, different ways that you could support yourself with your intuitive um, modality or way of receiving. So, <laughs> so if anybody has any questions, do you have any questions about intuition or any thoughts or... Um, I actually, I, I have to say, and I apologize for being interrupted with the chat room, but I, um, the last time I was in on a meditation with you as well, and I had to leave. It's very weird. This is the second one, and I had to leave, uh, but um, it's, it's very powerful. I was very, very, um, uh, I don't know, really clear with your meditation. Um, and I was asking the questions. That's something I've been trying to learn recently, to ask the questions. You need to ask the questions um, because I'm trying to get clear. And uh, I got some answers today. Uh, so, so thank you again. And I, I, uh, I was very, um, I was really, actually last time I did a meditation with you, I didn't even finish it and I was sobbing. So there's, there's something there, honey. I don't, I don't so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Well, yep. Thank you for, for sharing. And what I wanted to say to you is um, asking the questions, what you said, um, intuition is always happening, but we're living, we're overwhelmed. We've got social media. We've got this. We've got to make money. We've got to take care of kids. We've got to take a walk and stay healthy and make right choices of what we're eating. We've got to get enough sleep. I mean, the list grows on, but taking that moment, right? to drop into our body because a lot of traditions tell you to leave the body that the body's not sacred you know in the past and now we're allowing ourselves to return to settle into our breath and that's one of the quickest ways like you go into your breath your heartbeat and you drop in and just in whatever word you want to use because some people do not look at intuition as a spiritual thing they just know that we're made of energy wow wow i love thunderstorms so and we're made <laughs> yeah, of that's on that's on my end sorry yeah, I love it. And so we know that um, some people see intuition as a divine connection. Other people come to me, they're scientists. They're like, I don't believe in any of that, but I do know that we're made of energy. And I do believe that there's just, and a lot of people who are more scientifically minded, they say, well, we've probably gathered the information subconsciously. And since we only use a little part of our brain, really, actually, right, that some other part of our brain is putting the pieces together so we could notice things. And so whether you look at it from a spiritual perspective, whether you look at it from a more scientific, taking the time to just drop in to your body, to your breath, to your quiet, allows you to just ask that question, what do I need to know? And sometimes it's so simple as like rest. Right, because I have some students who are like, I need to know how I'm going to launch my program, and I need to know how I'm going to do this, and how am I going to move to Europe when we're blocked right now? And I'm like, Shh, wait a minute, wait a minute, let's drop into your breath, and and they're like, I'm only getting rest, and they get upset, and I'm like, how tired are you? And they're like, I'm exhausted. I'm like, how can you expect to receive this guidance when the foundation right now your tank isn't full? And so we need to allow ourselves not to have these expectations of our intuition right? Because it's going to guide us to what we need. So thank you. And asking those questions. And um, I think that, you know, in the old days, and I can say that because I was only five or six years old when my mom would go get a reading when I was a little kid. Um, in the old days, a lot of people thought of intuition as like, it's a destiny, it's set up, that's it. You know, they say, they look at your cards, or they look at your cup and or the pendulum. And they're like, boy, you'll never have children. And I've heard people say, <laughs> Oh my God, I never even tried to have children because a psychic lady told me and I'm like, what? You let somebody tell you not to even try? And so in the old days, we used to look at it that way. I think that in the last decade, in the last five years, we're beginning to realize that creating our lives is based on the choices that we make. And the more that we connect to our intuition, the more we can ask strategic questions too. 
like when I lost my job in 2012, I was already doing what I do with my work, but I didn't go full time because I was scared. I was like, oh, will I be able to support myself in New York City? And when I tapped in, it was like, you're going to do this. You're going to create the nine month program. You're going to charge $9,000. And I'm like, I'm going to do what? I don't have a list. I don't. And it all, and it, and it just kept unfolding and it happened. And so we can get those answers to our business questions, to our life questions, but we also have to tend to where our guidance is taking us on a foundational level. So anyone else with any questions or shares? Because if you don't, I have more stuff to say. <laughs> so how can we tell, oh, somebody said something here. Let me see what you said. That totally makes sense. Good advice, yes. Because it is, you know, we always have all these expectations and it's, we've been taught that, we've been taught that. Um, but I can say like when I was in college, I was 22 when my inner guidance said, hey, it's nice you're going to NYU to study film. You're not gonna be in the film world. And I was like, oh, heartbroken. I wanted to be a film director. And my guides were like, no, no, learn it, do what you do, but you're gonna be more of a spiritual director type of person. And I was like, oh, what? And by, by doing hypnosis work, by doing healing gatherings, by doing, uh, yeah, it's kind of like that, right? And so allowing myself to receive the messages, how can we pay more attention and listen to the intuition would be my question, right? And what I would say, it's a great question. How do we pay more attention? I say to committing to ourselves some silent time. It can be the beginning of the day. It could be at the end of the day. It could be in the shower if you have little kids, right? And if they're sleeping, it could be in the car. You'd be surprised at how many people do meditations with me in the car or hypnosis in the car. Because they're like, I got five kids in the house. I can't get away. Or people at work stay at work a little longer if they're going to work. Um, one of the ways you could do it is I call it tracking intuition. And um, what I do, what I did in the beginning of my development of intuition was I would set up a time. It was, you know, it was easier. I didn't have kids. I was young. I was like 19 doing this. I'd set up a certain time and then go in and go, what do I need to know? And then I'd write it in a book. It became my intuition book. Well, what, so I call it tracking because I would ask specific questions also about things that I needed to know about school, my life, my partner, and then I would let it go. And as time went on, I started to look back and go, wow, yes, I'm glad I made the decision. And it started to connect because we need to understand how our intuition communicates with us, right? And to give it a moment to deal, because we're getting, like I said, you know, we're getting the social media, we're getting all this happening. We need to be able to just be quiet, ask for the information, receive it. And I would say jot it down because part of us will feel more and more validated as we see not only that the information resonates for our lives, but that then there's a practical application for it, right? Because a lot of times we might get something a little like, love yourself, which of course we could all do with. But then after we start to work on that self-love, we might find, you know, it's time to leave that job. You might find, you know, go look here, it's time to go. And so we need to be able to show up every day, even for five minutes, to ask that question and then to notice what comes out. And when we do that, we're working that muscle that's already there. It's already there. We just need to give it space so it could stretch and grow. Um, yeah, so how do I amplify this ability and help others do the same? I would say that um, for Nick, if you continue to do this for yourself and get clearer and clearer, because you already know that you get inklings, you already know that you hear words to get clearer and clearer. And then when you're working with a client, you might guide them to breathe, you know, place your hand on their heart. And what is, what is your inner self telling you? What is your inner self guiding you to? If anything could happen, right? Which is a coaching question anyway. Allowing them to kind of break out of the box because intuition will help you get out of the everyday box. Someone said, Priscilla said, do you speak with many Christians about this? If so, then what is the general response reaction you receive? Priscilla, great question because uh, being Latina and speaking Spanish and having a big following in Latin America and Spanish speakers around the world, and also going to teach and work in Panama, teach and live and work in Costa Rica. I was scared. I just want to be honest with you. I was a little scared because um, just ancestrally, I know people have suffered in the past. And I found that by just being really grounded and being in my love rather than my fear energy, that no one has attacked me. And so I've been pretty loud now. I would say 10 years before that I was just local, like in New York. 
And then last few years, I've been on video four years. Latin America has a lot of Christians, a lot of Catholics. And um, I'd like 44,000 followers come into my Facebook page in less than a year and a half, right? And so I think that it's changing. And some Christians do get upset because they feel that divining, obviously, tarot cards, any sort of divination process is not good. And also they believe that, you know, we need to go outside, right? Like we need to ask the priest or we need to. But the thing is, if you are a Christian, you tend to pray every day. And if you're praying every day, and by the way, I don't call myself a Christian. I was raised Catholic. I do pray every day. And in those prayers, I receive answers. So when we're praying, we're developing a personal relationship. And I don't think that we're circumventing God, right? So if we are Christian and we have that Christian base, we could also say, you know, God, light my way. Let me know what to do. What is the best step for me? What do I need to know right now to serve you best? And so I think that it could be used in whatever religious practice you have, whether you're an atheist, whether you're a Christian, whatever it is that you are, you could still work it in because I do believe. So no one's ever really reacted poorly, I have to say. And I've talked in front of thousands of people online and hundreds in person who probably were very Catholic. So, and I would think too, that if anyone is extremely opposed to whatever I'm doing, they probably wouldn't even cross my path probably. They would just avoid me. So nothing negative has happened to me. Thank God. So Carolyn says, love that. Make it a part of journaling practice. Yes, yes. Make it part of your day. If you're taking any, maybe if you don't want to journal and you take a walk in nature, right? Allowing yourself to breathe, to look around at the light. I always find, because we want to be present, the way we connect intuition is being in present moment. I got a lot of downloads the other day on my treadmill, believe it or not, right? So I was in my treadmill, I was sweating, I was walking, morning, walking, running, and suddenly I'm just walking and I just started to feel and like sense and I was like, wow, I didn't even ask what I need to know. And it just happened because I was in such present moment. So know that you could do it through journaling, meditation, walking in nature, exercise. Yeah, thanks for joining, Carol. What are your thoughts about asking questions of intuition while you're falling asleep? Perfect. Yes, Lynn, I'm going to get to you in a minute. So Nick says, what are your thoughts about asking questions about intuition while falling asleep? So I read about, um, I think it's um, Thomas Edison, right? Who used to solve issues and problems. I think he used to write it out and go to sleep and then, or take a nap and wake up and get a solution. And that's the same idea, knowing that we only use a very small part of our actual brain that there's something else working itself out. And that's where I think trust comes in. Sometimes we try to force our conscious mind, which I think is also ego. No, I have to figure it out. One plus one equal two. But if we even write a little sticky note, put it next to our, you know, right next to our bed, that's worked before with some of my students and me. And been like, you know, let me receive some guidance. I want to wake up knowing. And then just getting to sleep and just peacefully allowing yourself to receive it. And you may have a dream, you may have guidance, you may wake up going, wow, I didn't get anything. But then in the day, suddenly you're like, oh, wait, this is the best decision. And so just being patient with that. So that's a great question. So Lynn, yes, Lynn, ask our question. Unmute yourself. I did. Thank you. Um, I was just thinking about other ways and when you were making your list of how intuition can come to us, it came to me as art. Sometimes I get in that Zen space of doing art and just, it's like, it's as though I'm so open and just things get figured out. It's incredible. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's really, and that's why you know now, or you always did know that your intuition comes through through your art. And that's why it's so important to spend a little time feeling into, thinking into, well, how does it come to me? Right, so we don't force it. If it comes to you during your nature walk, or it comes to you during singing, or it comes to you through working out, or through creating art. Because yeah. it's your present moment when you're doing art. Yeah, and I, so that, that being said, then I'm thinking, yeah, you're right, because when I'm playing with animals, or when I'm in nature, or, yeah, all that. You're right. Yeah. Right, when our conscious mind stopped trying to control the thing, you know, the monkey mind, right? Yeah. Trying to control everything. Um, but we've been taught that we've been taught to try to control because of what's gone on historically is still going on. Right. And trying to feel safe and trying to survive. I wanted to talk briefly about the difference between fear and intuition before we close out. Um, a lot of people are like, well, how are we going to tell the difference? Fear stresses you out. 
period. Fear takes you out of your body. Fear sets you up into a paranoia, almost like what's going to, uh, and you're agitated. Your breath comes up really high. You could feel dizzy. You could feel stressed. It doesn't allow you to connect to truth because now your chemistry has been altered. Your heartbeat's racing, right? Like, oh my God, if I do that, what's going to happen? So in that moment, we need to just breathe and come in and come back to the body, come to the breath close our eyes. And I use the golden light. People use different color, but I use it because to me, it's alchemical. It transforms, right? The energy of it, this fear into a more refined energy of love and truth. And so we breathe in love and truth, or we breathe in this golden light, the white light, whatever we want to, we call on God or whoever is that we follow or, or what we practice and coming back and just like, okay, what do I need to know? So fear is going to stress us out. There's going to be these changes in us. Intuition comes to us as a repetitive, repetitive, usually repetitive, usually very peaceful, usually when we're very present. And it tends to be objective. Like some people have said to me, Vanessa, I don't want to see, I don't want to know because some of my family members are sick and I'm scared. And I'm like, when did you ever get a real intuition where it stressed you out? And they were like, no, you're right. And I said to her, you know, I've even gotten information of people passing in my life. And when I first get the information, it's just peaceful. It's like, you know, Vanessa, they don't have a lot of time. And I'm like, okay, you're right. Now, an hour later, when I think about it and I stress myself out about it, then I can react, right? Or half an hour later, oh my God, the reality of it. But if you notice your intuition, even if you've been on a date and you're like, yeah, this is not going to work out. You just know it even like before you get there or something hits you, you're calm when you get it. Then you start thinking, oh my God, I'm never going to find love. What is this? I'm wasting my time on the dating sites or whatever it is I'm doing. But the initial energy of what comes through is usually objective, usually repetitive, and usually peaceful. So that's something that you'll be able, if you're stressing out, you're going to notice. Um, you're going to be like, okay, let me chill myself out first. Because a lot of people have called me freaking out, like, oh my God, I think something's bad. Now. I'm like, just breathe. Let's get back to that center. And they're like, oh, I'm just afraid of the thing that could happen. I'm not really getting that it's going to happen. I'm like, right. You're just afraid of what could, but you're not getting that it, that it will. And just to add, I think that many of you already may know this, but the more we're in present moment, the more we're able to listen, also able to act accordingly. I just want to share quickly, and I think Deb knows the story, but really quick. I was in a car accident in 2012, and before the car accident, I was laying in the back with my leg in between both my parents in the front seat, like hanging out, because it was like seven in the morning, and I heard, sit up straight so you don't break your back. So I did, because I know my intuition. I hear things, so I sat up, and I brought my legs back down, and I was like, okay, let me sleep. I'm tired, and we were going on a family vacation, and then I heard, just check in. Your parents have their seatbelts on. I checked, my mom didn't. She's like, okay, I'll put it on. How weird, I didn't put it on, she put it on. Within minutes, um, the tire exploded. We lost control of the car. My dad's trying to get a hold of the wheel. We started careening towards the truck. And in that moment, I'm like, oh my God, this is it. Like, this was eight years ago. I'm like, I didn't even go full time. I didn't do this. I didn't run my book. I didn't do that. I'm going through the list of everything I didn't do in life, right? And I'm holding on. And I just kept hearing, you're fine. Everything's fine you're going to be fine. All of you are fine. And then I'm like still negotiating like, okay, if I die, can I hang out on earth? Can I help my family? Like, I don't want to go so quickly. Please take me out of my body before my neck snaps. I mean, this was my inner conversation really authentically. I was like, I don't want to hear the crunch of my neck, all of this. And I keep hearing you're fine. And so my dad was able to grab the wheel before we hit the truck and we, and he rolled it off, but we started to, we rolled like twice or so down the hill. And as I'm rolling in slow motion, I'm like, okay, any minute I'm going to leave the body. And it's like, my guides are like, no, you're living. It's all good. When we landed, I was able to know that I was alive because I didn't know if I was alive at first. I was in shock. I was like, I helped my parents unbuckle themselves, help them get out. And as I crawled out, you know, my guidance said, Vanessa, we just helped you through one of the worst things in your life, the scariest. Go make your business. Go create your business. Because com compared to this, creating your business, you're going to be fine. And it was so interesting. I was like, I felt that I got that lesson in even during this time of like motion and rolling and possibly dying and thinking I heard all this 
like, you know, car crashing sounds and, and, and glasses breaking. And I'm like, any moment, something's going to hit me, but nothing hit me. I had no glass. I had no injuries. Very blessed. My family was fine. My mom had some broken ribs from the actual seatbelt. And so even in that moment, like intuition came through for me and it was peaceful. It was just loving. And it was just like, you're fine. You know, and then said, sit up straight so you don't break your back. It didn't say, hey, in a couple of minutes, you're about to have been in an accident. You're going to be okay. It didn't give me all of the information. It just said, you're going to be calm. And then when I walked out, I was like, you know, I mean, and I've been doing this all my life and still that was the next level. And so just know that the more you cultivate your intuition, the more it will be with you in those times where you're a little stressed out or a little like what's happening. Because since you've already developed the relationship and the practice and you know what it feels like, it'll be easy to recognize it. Wow. Carol says, that's powerful when you have an event like that and come out renewed. Yeah, I was still scared. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I figured if I crawled out of the car, okay, my parents survived too, that I could figure out how to create a business. <laughs> It's amazing, Vanessa. Thank you so much for being here and sharing all of this with us. I think everybody kind of like got to take some things away and really enjoyed this chat. Uh, I did post some resources in the chat bar. If you do want to save the chat, you can just press the three little dots and uh, click on uh, save chat and you'll be able to save that for the like the links there. Um, I have a link for the book that she was recommending as well as um, Vanessa's website there um, that she had sent me earlier. So also wanted to comment that um, make sure that you guys, if you're not already in the Find Calm Here community, it is now free. You can get in there. You can dig into the resources. We have the replays from all the events we've done since April. And then um, you can connect with all of these lovely people that are already in the community. Nick is in, Stephanie, Vanessa, uh, Maria, Kelly, Carolyn, Lynn. Uh, I think everybody except for a few here are on the call. So um, make sure you're connecting uh, with everybody in the community. If you want to keep this conversation going, I did create a tag today so that you can actually tag it. Um, when you're talking about intuition, you can just tag intuition and then you can share. Um, cause I feel like I was just totally relating to a few things too, as you're, as you're talking. So, well, thank you so much. Um, find, uh, find calm here .com is our website where you want to get the links for the events for the next zoom calls that are coming up. We have two events coming up next week. Uh, one is going to be find calm in small places. That's next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time uh, with our partner. Uh, she's going to talk to us about how she was on a Navy ship and she was able to find calm in a very small shared confined space and she still was able to do that and hopefully we can take some tips away from that and then also on thursday i am hosting a master um, master class for mindset i had talked to and interviewed a few partners and a few vip members and they said this is something that they that would be really helpful for them so i'm working on a, um, a work some worksheets now for that master class it's going to actually be on crowdcast but you can pick up the link and register for it on findcalmhere.com. Uh, so those will be the two coming up events. We always have the replays in the community and they are on our YouTube page as well. So thank you all for being here. I'm going to have you guys, if you want to unmute and just wave and say bye as you head on out. Thank you all for your time. Bye guys. Bye everyone. See you bye. in the Calm Here community. Bye bye. Great to meet you all. Great to meet you. Have fun intuiting. <laughs>